Hey everybody, and welcome to another Gutenberg live show. I'm Joe Casabona, and as always, I'm joined with my co-host Zach Gordon. Zach, how are you? How do y'all doing? Well, happy to be here. Plenty to talk about, eh? Yeah, lots and lots of stuff to talk about. So let's let's dive into it. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna tweet the link out here. Everybody's the the movie magic here. I didn't schedule anything, so I need to tweet the link out. But uh, let's talk about our personal updates first. Zach, you want to let people know what you're working on? Yeah, most of what I've got going on is ramping down the current boot camp, although it's kind of ramping up, finishing up a uh, current three-month boot camp and getting ready to start another. So over at javascriptwp.com slash boot camp, got a three-month uh, online live lectures, discussions, small cohort, boot camp learn, vanilla JavaScript, React, Gutenberg, all the REST API stuff, and uh, it's pretty cool. This format is new, but it's it's good, and the folks coming through have learned a ton. So it's taken a bunch of my focus, although I've released a couple new courses and have more coming. So all, all that's over at JavaScriptforWP.com, keeping it busy. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, similarly, uh, I have been keeping things pretty busy, um, <laughs> to say the least. Zach got like the long-form version of this yesterday. Um, but, uh, I'm just going to drop some links in the chat here for, oh, got to do it separately. Um, so the, the big thing that I did this week is, uh, a workshop with iThemes, basically, uh, designing your theme for Gutenberg. It, it's based loosely on the course that Zach and I did together. Uh, and so I thought that went really well. It was like a two and a half, three hour workshop and. We talked about everything from Gutenberg compatible themes to uh, at the end, I actually uh, like took questions and, and people threw challenges at me to try to style Gutenberg blocks a certain way. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'll drop the link in the chat and uh, you can still buy that workshop. It's available now and you'll get the video and all of the resources that I put together for that. Um, I'm also working on as part of my goal for putting out a month of worth of content, right? So uh, I'm going for like uh, 24 days, right? Or 26 days out of the 30 days here. Um, uh, over on Creator Courses, I have some good pieces of content for uh, Gutenberg uh, themes and how to disable, you know, stuff that we've covered on this episode uh, or on, on this podcast. Um, but I'm also doing like a series on implementing Gutenberg, which is pretty cool. I got to interview Justin uh, Saint Santon um, and Renee Morozovich. Uh, and Bill Erickson is coming up next week. So I'm pretty excited for that series. Just people who are using Gutenberg in real world projects. Um, so that's the stuff that I've been uh, working on as well. And uh, with that, we have... A lot of news. There's a lot of news to talk about. There's a lot of news. There's not a ton of changes with Gutenberg itself, but there is a lot of news. Yeah. Um, yesterday, so what, November 14th. Well, let's start with this, right? The WordPress 5.0 was supposed to come out this coming Monday, right? November. That was one possibility. That was one possibility, yes. That was the day that was being shot for. Um, now it got, uh, they had a slip date of uh, November 27th. And that seems to be the date that people are working towards now. So uh, uh, basically 5.0 beta 4 is currently out. Uh, WordPress 5.0, the official release has been delayed to the 27th. Some folks are happy about that because it misses Cyber Weekend. Uh, some folks are upset because it comes out on Giving Tuesday, uh, and it's still in the midst of the holiday season. And the thing that most people are upset about still is that many feel that Gutenberg is not ready for prime time yet, uh, either for accessibility reasons or there's just a lot of a lot of open issues still. Um, which uh, so let's why don't we talk about what's up in the current beta before we get to this uh this next story from wp steward 
Sure. So basically, <clears throat> you can now go and get Gutenberg as it would run in WordPress. So all the packages are bundled in WordPress.com. Um, a while ago, they removed most references to Gutenberg, but now they're all out. So things are usually having WP underscore inst or WP dot instead of Gutenberg. Um, and in terms of like integrating it, they did it. So I mean, let's, we'll get to all the controversy, but I want to at least acknowledge developers doing their jobs um, when we can, you know. So they they got that, and I've been playing around with it. Um, some things have changed. Um, I, this is a little out of order, but maybe we could just mention, you know, the the WordPress beta is matching Gutenberg beta update. So Gutenberg plugins updating, and then the uh, Beta would just have the currentest version of that. So I think we're on like 4.2 currently. And there are a lot of little changes and refinements going on, even some breaking changes with um, some of the naming of things or what's being used or not. So there's, yeah, the, it's continuing to go on, but they're at the point now where we'll see what else needs to be added, but they are trying to at least functionally, if they wanted to turn on Gutenberg in WordPress and ship it out, it's wired up. So what more we do with Gutenberg and all that? Um, and I think that there might still be refinements internally. There's there's more that they want to do. Like um, you could pull in all the packages off of the WordPress repo and make them available in the global scope for any of your JavaScript. So you don't have to enqueue them manually. But I don't know like how far that's done. And then that's not really counted as like need to do. It's just a like, well, we want to keep building on this, right? So uh, it's been interesting there. But as we've talked about, we're trying to update our own content to work with this. And like we said, you know, when the beta comes out, we'll start doing that. So that's been my experience um, working with that, seeing what breaks, what doesn't. The cool thing is, is like most of it, um, you know, I have a bunch of example blocks. Most of that hasn't changed too much. But if you are building plugins, there are a few little things. Um, color palette is one uh, that changed. And there's a format API, which is kind of cool. So now you can select text inside of a rich text editor and style just that in line. And we've got a link here for a uh, cool format API plugin. So, OK, cool. Yeah, that's my contribution to it all. Nice. Uh, from the UI standpoint and the theming standpoint, uh, I the biggest thing I noticed is like the font slider has been just converted to like a tick box. Um, that happened like live during my iThemes webinar. Like I just asked to update to the latest version and there was a UI change. Uh, and, um, you know, that is, we suspect that that's for accessibility reasons. Um, it is a slightly frustrating for me that we're still seeing like breaking changes this late in the game. Uh, right. Because we, um, you know, it's supposed to be like feature frozen or whatever. Of course, it's not a release candidate yet, right? That's the the whole point of this extended beta is that it's still a beta and things can change and the release candidate is supposed to be the next stable version. Uh, so thankfully, we have a week between the release candidate and the official release to make any changes that were breaking changes in the beta. Um, so... All of this is to say, all of this uh, of what I'm driving at here is that uh, a lot of the community feels like Gutenberg is a little bit rushed. And before before I get in, we get into this, I should say that I don't want to discount any of the work that anybody on the project is doing. They are working insanely hard to make sure, um, to to make sure that the new editor is as good as it could be before the release of 5.0 i think so so i don't think that their work should be undercut or undermined here they're also not setting the deadlines or determining that exactly and that was my very next point they are not determining the day there is one person in my opinion uh who has determined the deadline um and uh well i mean let's let's just get into it so uh, I do want to say that I, I think that the the development team is doing an admirable job uh, given the uh, momentous effort that they need to put into this. So uh, yesterday um, over on WPSteward.com, uh, a site run by Ben Meredith who works with like Give 
Uh, and he put out an article that says the WordPress community deserves the why on the timeline of version 5.0. And he lays out uh, his argument, basically, that we've, we haven't been told why. Uh, we've just been told that that's the way it is. Um, and so this, this article gained a lot of traction. And uh, enough that Matt actually responded um, with the reason for the deadline is because I said so. I mean, I'm sorry, because uh, because it's ready is what he said, uh, his actual words, um, which still isn't a reason. Um, you know, what's the this this process has been so open again, the development team has gone through great lengths to develop in the open right uh we get pretty in-depth updates on the make website you can follow all of the development chat in slack but there's not criteria laid out for what makes gutenberg ready um and uh matt matt's response yesterday was unacceptable is maybe a strong term, but it definitely was subpar. Um, because it's ready doesn't give us any more information. Uh, but to Matt's credit, he did do a Q and A uh, at WordCamp Portland, uh, Oregon, over last weekend, and so he did give people the opportunity to ask questions. Right, and so um, I haven't watched that yet. Uh, the Tavern has a really good write up on it. And um, the what, what's the what's the name of uh of the WP Weekly podcast covered it pretty good, right? That's uh, Jeffro and J Trip. Um, so uh, there's some resources there you, that's available to watch now if you want to watch it. Um, and that's certainly admirable. And I think Matt showed up at a, a meetup in Portland, Maine, li- uh, like earlier this week, uh, to answer questions as well. Um, so. You know, I think there's a lot of hot drama yesterday between that and some other things that were happening on the accessibility side. Um, and I I want to make it seem like I'm doing more than just complaining. Because um, I do care deeply about this. Pro- I mean, like, I'm wearing the shirt, right? Um, I care deeply about the project. And I I don't want to see a situation where people lose trust in something that has had such a deep impact on my life over the last 15, 14, 15 years because we arbitrarily set a release date. Um, so that that's, that's why I want to bring this to the attention. And, and I don't, I don't know how far my voice goes in all of this, but I, I do want to put it out there. Um, Zach, what are your thoughts on this? Generally, I'm the bad cop and you're the good cop in these these situations. Um, yeah, I guess my thought is like, what is this actually saying or changing about Gutenberg itself and its rollout? Like you said, um, people wanting to know more of why. I think there's some subtext and I love co-hosting this with you because you'll just come out and say it and we've talked about what we think some of our reasons could be for the deadlines and why and other pressures involved, you know, that would like to see this implemented for other reasons. So, um, I don't know, man. my heart just goes out to everybody. I feel for folks that have legitimate concerns that this might break things or do things. But for me, it always comes back to like, are we upset because we have to do extra work that we don't know how to do to keep things the same and keep going? Or is it concern for other people that don't know what's coming and we're afraid that they might do it and we want to reach them? Because to me, those are valid concerns and everything else is like what we call WP drama, you know? So, but it is, it is nice and drama filled, but I don't know that I have too much to add to it because um, now that said, one of the things that is valid is like somebody somewhere I would imagine has a list of like what needs to be done and where that is, although it's so mammoth and like, it's also expect, I don't know, it's completely acceptable to want that, but they also put in so imagine all the projects we do and how much, uh, you know, they have written out, but 
writing out and like, here's our goal. They tried to in the past put like, here's deadlines and here's what we want to hit and fix. My understanding is they're just trying to make everything as good as possible with what has been pretty locked down. Like there aren't major new features coming really. And they are trying to improve things and some breaking changes to get that done. <clears throat> but yeah, is it like all these issues have to be closed out or these ones or it basically works? Um, that, that That's fair. I wonder, yeah. I also wonder how realistic it is, but at the same time, how it's handled. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and my concern is, is I, look, I have courses out there for people who are going to be confused by this, right? I, I mean, some might say the more confusion there is, the more money that I stand to make. But that's not <laughs> like that's not why I got into this, right? I want to I want to educate people, uh, but I also want the software to remain good, right? Uh, I don't want people to get frustrated and then start leaving WordPress. And so you're right. Like, where is, what is that checklist? Uh, like, uh, what does it look like? Who's determining it? Um, Because at this point, it kind of seems like Matt is the CEO of Automatic and the WordPress open source project. And that's not what the WordPress open source project is about. So th the, my, you know, my concerns, the reason that all of a sudden, right, it seems like all of a sudden since the, the release date was announced, I'm, uh, I've been negatively vocal about this is because when people ask me what the best part about WordPress is, I say the community and how everybody has a voice. And it really seems like a lot of voices are being silenced because of a state of the union address because of investor pressures, whatever it is. And, and this is wild speculation, right? Cause we don't have a reason. Maybe there is a legitimate reason that needs to come out before December, but we haven't been given one and it's not ready or it is ready is not good enough because a lot of people don't think it is ready. So there it is. Uh, Zach, you're absolutely right. I'm just taking subtext and stating it explicitly for those who aren't picking up on the subtext. Um, but uh, let's talk about more positive things. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. So so let's let's just say Gutenberg is uh, 5.0 is coming out on November 27th. If this is a train that we can't stop, let's help people uh get out of the way of the train right well, before potentially. They get... we don't know for certain and they haven't released it yet so you're right it, it hasn't been released yet but based on matt's tweet to ben in response to this article it's ready it will be ready on october uh, on november 20th and they're just waiting a week uh, due to their benevolence, but I guess. I don't know how that could be tech. Sorry to get hung up on here, but yeah. if we're still in a beta, can they really get through just one release candidate and launch it in one week? I don't think that that's possible. Like, I imagine there's at least going to be two of these. So I imagine it has to get pushed back. It it should be, right? And, and a week? A week for a release candidate? Is yeah, we've nothing. gone through four betas. Right. We've gone through four betas. We haven't gotten a release candidate yet. You know what that means? That means that it's not ready. Because if it was ready, we'd have a release candidate. Right? And are we going to hit the November 19th release candidate deadline? Maybe. Is 2019 ready? I don't know. Matt is using it on his website. It doesn't look ready, but it's nice to see that he's dog fooding the pro I mean that's not a knock on his website it's just it doesn't look ready right we've all there's only one update on make about it and that's announcing it and it says that it, it probably won't hit the 5.0 release so again I'm going back to the this blog article why who says it's ready we've already missed 20 like there's no 2018 theme 2019 theme should be rolling out with 5.0 but it's not but it may, it may also be that like it's ready is in the big picture and we're working out the details and it may be January before ready is ready. But 
we're just trying to get it done. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, right. Maybe, uh, maybe this is all a psychological game, right? The deadline is this deadline. And or, I mean, you know, when two people talk, one could be talking about this and one could be talking about this, so it's kind of a... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. The more all the more reasons just, for just to pull yeah. that back up for yeah, yeah, yeah. because I, I would be surprised if we only have one release candidate and it was done in a week and that was hit that deadline. I have a feeling we're gonna ease into it a little bit more. This is this is why I like doing the show with you, Zach. I feel like <laughs> we're like Hannity and Combs, and I'm unfortunately Hannity in this situation. Like <laughs> um let, so let's talk about more positive things, right? Um, and I'm going to start. I'm going to jump to the bottom of our list here. Uh, so more in, positive. Okay. Yeah, exactly. More in, uh, Rand Hendrickson has also been pretty vocal. Um, it's, a, it's about as shocking that he's been vocal as it is that it's been shocking that I'm vocal uh, about Gutenberg. But he decided that we need some positivity. And uh, so he put out a call to hear stories about how WordPress changed your life um something big or small and he's been retweeting the answers so that's been that's been really good to see and it, it i mean i didn't um i didn't talk about this with you beforehand zach but uh I, i'm willing to share my story if you want to share your story if you have one in mind i have one in mind i was thinking about this yesterday when i saw the tweet um and so you know it's i got into wordpress and like 2004 because i told my friend that i want to build a content management system and i was I, well i guess i'm around matt's age so it's not an insane thought because he was doing it uh, but it was an insane thought for me because i didn't really know what i was doing um but uh, uh and then he told me about wordpress and and wordpress has been pretty great it's helped me grow my business and i was able to more effectively freelance all throughout college but uh, it really, the biggest impact that it's had on me is that I'm a published author. Like I had a, I've, I've dreamt about publishing a book and because of WordPress, I was able to do that. And now some of my closest friends and mentors are people that I met in the WordPress space. Um, Chris Lama and Sean Hesketh, to name a couple. I, my career is in existence because of WordPress. I was able to differentiate myself in a way that I don't know if I would have been able to if it was just plain web development, right? Or if WordPress didn't exist. Um, so I am very thankful for that. And, you know, the, maybe part of the reason that I get like this is because uh, I do love it so much. You know, it's been my main tool for 12 years and I've been using it for 14. And I, I only want the best for it. And so I, I hope for the best for it. Uh, and I contribute in the way I can to make sure we get the best for it. So uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without WordPress. I mean, that's just, frankly, uh, that's the truth. So You're shining some positivity in here about the community. The community is cool. Um, yeah, I mean, my my bigger picture, you know, as an educator is... I like to teach and in teaching technology, we always got to stay current with what's what and WordPress and in some ways is current and cool and solves a lot of things and in other ways isn't. So I've always got my eyes and interests in different places and the long path. But at the same time, the community has allowed me to teach what I do in a niche and only focus on teaching subjects to just within that community. And that's really cool. And of course, you know, going out and meeting folks in person at WordCamps and traveling and doing that uh, makes it all a lot more, like you said, you develop the personal relationships, but also businessing, networking, and all of that um, is cool. And by and large, you know, interesting groups of people. So um, yeah, that said, um, yeah, no, we're keeping it positive. And that said, at the same time, like everybody who's focused just on WordPress right now we also live in larger bubbles. So we're not just in WordPress and this does kind of uh, make us think like, hey, even if the software might have this, what is it that we're, we're truly valuing and thriving on and uh, will that long sustain it further? 
which is cool. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, and I think that's a really good point, right? Uh, that we we're in larger bubbles. It's important to bring outside perspective in and teaching. I'm sure it, it does that for you. It does that for me. Um, up until I started teaching in the classroom, I was WordPress is easy. WordPress is easy. WordPress, you need to learn WordPress. And I'm happy to teach that. And my students made me very aware that some of the things that I thought were easy, um, they needed some guidance on. And I'm a better teacher because of it. And I think that WordPress is better because of it, right? WordPress is better with teachers like you and me and people who understand our students and, and want to make sure they are getting the most out of WordPress because it's insanely powerful and it can enable people who have very little to build successful businesses. Okay, that's my favorite thing about WordPress, WordPress and all this is seeing people who learn something and then support their family and go have rich, beautiful lives, or at least like slightly richer because they're struggling slightly less to get by and they have more freedom now. And, you know, as a teacher, I see that happen a lot. It's all over. I actually see a very limited amount of it. But that is really, you know, the deeper stuff that sustains you is really cool. I like that a lot. It is an yeah. enabler for stuff. And potentially, despite all the riffraff that we're getting through now, hopefully WordPress will continue to be an enabler of that. Yeah, I think these are growing pains. I mean, it's a little bit unprecedented, right? WordPress powers over 30% of the web. Um, it's it's one of the biggest open source projects out there. And it's supported by a lot of... There's a lot of corporate backing, right? Um, and so lines get blurred and things are hard to see but this is you know we're this is a little bit unprecedented and it's grow it is growing pains um but it is an enabler it's enabled me to build a good business and support my family um i've had zach i'm sure you've had the same thing i've had students or people who have read my book come up to me and say hey your your book helped me or your course helped me start my business like i am people who have told me that they're better off because of the learning materials I put out there. So um, there's nothing in the world that is better than hearing that. And I have WordPress to thank for it. Whew. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling we, we have, we saturated that one, right? We got that. Sure positive. Yeah. Again, I hope y'all are feeling it reflect on something good. Yeah. You know? Yep. Uh, so getting to some more news. Um, you mentioned the format API plugin that's out there um, surrounding some theme news. Mm -hmm. uh, some my, one of my favorite themes, uh, Astra, is Gutenberg compatible, which is great. There's a free and pro version of that. I'm a big fan of Astra, so it's cool to see that they are Gutenberg compatible. Our buddy Mike McAllister uh, over at Array Themes, uh, Array Themes joins, joined WP Engine. Formerly of Array Themes. Yes, formerly of Array Themes, now of WP Engine. Um, and so it's cool to see WP Engine throwing their weight behind Atomic Blocks because that's a really great theme and a really great Blocks plugin um, that's going to have a bit more support thanks to WP Engine. So uh, congratulations to Mike for that um, and uh, the rest of the team at Array Themes. I think there were a couple of people over at Array Themes, right? Oh, um, that would make sense, but I didn't know that if that is the case. I saw some names in the press release, so uh, <laughs> um, I'm sorry to uh, the rest of the folks who work with Mike, if they are part of this as well, for not knowing you. Um, so, uh, so that's really cool to see. Um, Genesis 2.7 is out, and that lays some of the groundwork for making all of the studio press themes um gutenberg compatible which is really cool uh so glad to see um themes that are so ubiquitous uh getting gutenberg and wordpress 5.0 support um which is which is i'm happy to see that so uh th those are just some of the headlines that i came across over the last few weeks it's been like a month since we talked yeah. um so uh, 
Zach, I, I, did you want to elaborate on anything? I think I think we basically covered everything that you dropped in here, but yeah, um, <clears throat> I think that covers everything. One little piece that has kind of come up, although I don't know if it's been fully announced, is like, is what's the plan with Classic Editor? Um, mm -hmm. It still looks like it won't be installed by default, which I still think would be really cool to have that as a backup. But um, yeah, is it? At least it will be supported for some years to come officially, and we'll see further after that. Yeah, right, right, right. That's a good point. Um, is that I think it was announced that it'll be supported until December 2021, which is three years. Um, I was I miscounted, and I'm like, this is not a long time at all. But it is. I mean, three years is especially in like software development land. It's a long time. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, I also want to shout out. I don't know if Rich is still here. Rich, Rich Tabor or Tabor. Rich, I don't know how to say your last name in real life. Um, uh, he's he was in the chat. I don't know if he still is, but uh, he's doing some really cool stuff with Gutenberg. I was checking out uh, some of his plugins while I was writing a roundup for um, CreatorCourses.com, which I'll publish probably tomorrow. But uh, I'm I'm really digging some of the stuff uh, that he's doing with Coblox and. Um, the block gallery suite of, of photo gallery plugins and stuff like that. And I think there was a test, like a block tester. I hmm. came across that. I'll have to find the link and drop it in the show notes. But uh, I saw like a, a block tester plugin of, of some sort. So that looked pretty cool too. But um, shout out to, to Rich for doing some, some cool stuff with, uh, with Gutenberg as well. Yeah. It's got a good blog too. share some good stuff like it. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I was referencing that pretty heavy when I was doing my color palette stuff. Um, you know, we have our course, but I saw he tweeted about a change that was potentially coming. It looks like that change is only on the JavaScript side, though, right? Which has now come, correct. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. So uh, if you're doing stuff with the theme and you just want to like disable or set a custom color palette in your theme with PHP, that's not going to be affected. Uh, that's not going to be affected. Very cool. Um, so with the rest of our time here, uh, during the iThemes webinar, I got a few really good questions that I think would be worthwhile to address here, um, especially with Zach here. Like Zach, you've dug deep into the code uh, better than I have, I think. Um, so the first was uh, I was showing them how to do block templates and somebody asked where they could find a list of all the core blocks that they can then reference in block templates. Um, do you know of a resource that exists like that where uh, you can maybe just copy and paste the code, like the how to reference the blocks in the code? Nope, haven't seen that. <clears throat> Couldn't, wouldn't be too hard to put together. Interesting thing, but no, I haven't. Or just even a UI for it. Yeah, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's super interesting, right? Um, Plugin could, that could easily let you make them. Yeah, not a bad idea. Free idea, everybody get out there and do that before I do. Um, I probably won't because I'm insanely busy with course stuff. But uh, somebody else, get out there and Follow do that. Follow my ideas here, though. I know. Not just, to share overflowing with ideas that's worth paying for um that's like the that's like an advanced custom fields of gutenberg blocks right um so i was just thinking like a list but that that plugin idea would be really cool uh, and the same thing for color palette classes right because we were i was talking about um customizing buttons uh in such a way where you don't disable the ability to use custom color palettes with the buttons um and so i think there's a nifty way to do that in sass i'm working up that tutorial as well but uh if the, i was wondering if zach if you knew of a list that just kind of lists out the slugs of all the colors in the default color palette uh if that doesn't exist it will by the end of the day because that's my content for today um yeah, you could set, okay, so when you're creating it in the JavaScript, which is kind of the first point of it, you can hard code or dynamically feed in some stuff there. You can also at a theme or plugin level in your PHP 
load it from there. Um, yeah. Cool. Gotcha. Um, and it'll override it if it's at the PHP level, what's there. So you can pass stuff in. Nice. Nice. Cool. So that's that's something that's good to know about the custom color palettes. Again, if you just want like a list of all the slugs for the default color palette, I will uh, I'll just publish those out. Um, that probably seems like there's going to be some manual work, but I'll include like a tutorial with it as well. Month of content, right? Um, something that's definitely worth doing for yeah. you know teams for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Especially like if you do want to. So so the use case that I was thinking here was. Um, studio press themes have like a secondary class that they throw on buttons where there's no background but there's like the underline uh, that is the same color as the primary button and I thought that would be pretty cool to just like slap on a secondary class and, and get that effect but if you are using a custom color palette uh, you will lose the ability to customize that line and so um there's a couple of ways that you can do it in CSS. I'm, I'm writing a tutorial, like I said, for that. But it would be cool just to have a list where we could reference those classes. Um, or at least those slugs for, for whatever it is we need it. Um, and then the last question I got, and there, there was an answer, but it didn't work. So, Zach, maybe you could shed some light on this, too. Can we disable the font settings like we can the color palette? And I did some digging, and I found a GitHub issue and subsequently a pull request that got merged in that supposedly adds that theme support, but it did not work for me. So if, I don't know this is what you're talking about, but the format API will let us tie into the editor itself and do a little bit more inline. <clears throat> is that what you mean? So I mean like, um, so you can add theme to support to disable custom color palettes, right? Uh, and then the custom color palette won't show up uh, on the blocks that generally support a custom color palette, right? Uh, and then you also have the font settings box where you can change the size of the fonts. Yeah, so I don't know if that's opened up with the format API, but I know that they are still extending the rich text editor and have more plans to it, which are not officially part of like, Gutenberg ready, but more just continuing work that's ongoing. So I haven't seen that specifically, like someone post a demo or it's spec'd out in the documentation, but um, I wouldn't, yeah, my guess is that not yet, but potentially at some point. Cool. But I might gotcha. be wrong on that. Yeah, I haven't seen that though. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that and it didn't work. So maybe there's a bug. Or maybe I'll test it further and then like actually make a real contribution to the core project. Instead of just pissing and moaning. Um, but actually, the what you just mentioned with the format API reminded me of another question I got, which was uh, somebody asked, is there a way similar to adding your own... Like, so in, in currently in the classic editor, in Tiny MCE, you can add your own custom styles adder, right? So, like, you can add a drop-down box to, to assign the alert class to some highlighted text, right? Is there a way to do that with Gutenberg blocks? And it sounds That's like what the, the format API is. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Uh, I will add that to my, for anybody who happens to be watching this, who also attended my iThemes webinar, I'll add that to the GitHub repo uh, in the resource section. And maybe I'll play around with that a little bit for funsies. Um, man, so, man, so, okay. So let's, let's close strong. There's a lot of fun stuff to play with in Gutenberg. Um, a lot of fun stuff to play with and a lot of really good educational content that we, we can produce, right? I'm like, I'm not wanting for uh, content ideas. I've got lots of them. Um, I was just thinking, man, because honestly, like what started off is like, oh, I got to learn this to do block development. Now it's, there's like five times as much other things that tie in. It is... And once you know it, like the other ones make sense, but it is a lot to wrap your head around, especially at this stage in the game. Yeah. The nice thing about this stage of the game is that there's a lot more right now that I can do with PHP without being proficient in React, uh, which is cool. And maybe that'll help me work backwards, right? Because maybe I'm doing something in PHP and I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I could do this. 
oh, but I actually need the React side to do that. So now I have a real application where I would want to learn React, not just a, not a just suppose, right? Yep. It's a lot harder to be driven to learn something new when you have a just suppose as opposed to a real world application. Yep, and I have a feeling ACF blocks will let a lot of people not have to learn JavaScript for a little while longer. Right, yeah. But but on that same token, right, if I'm if I can build a nice meta box with or meta block with ACF. Just a block block. Just a block block, right, yeah, exactly. Um with ACF. And I wanna add something really nifty that ACF doesn't let me do. Now I have that real world use case. Yeah. For, for wanting to learn. So it'll be a little gateway, right? It's like how people used to say you should learn JavaScript and they J jQuery and then like they flipped that ideology, right? Where people said, learn jQuery and that'll help you learn vanilla JavaScript. I think this is maybe the same way. Yeah, React is an easier entry point. And you can technically like get by with Gutenberg without knowing too much React. I've seen folks doing that. Cool. Well, that I'm at the same place now that I was last year where I wanted to learn Vue and React and then I was like I'll learn Vue and then it was announced that Gutenberg was going to be React and I'm like I'll learn React and I haven't learned either so that's where I'm at now I've learned a lot of stuff this year just not JavaScript related <laughs> stuff well don't worry I've been learning extra for all of us <laughs> excellent and and you're going to distill it in in a way that very few people can, so uh, some really cool resources there. Oh, thanks, buddy. <sighs> all right, well, that's all I've got, right? I think we have we've we've whipped this thing around enough at this point. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. If you if you were here at the beginning and you stayed until the end, thanks. Uh, thank you for Send that. It out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. Well, until next time. Maybe then. So uh, on the schedule, it looks like the 29th would be the next time we'd get together. Um, maybe by then, 5.0 will be out. What do you think? Uh, what's what's your guess? Yay nay. Uh, it, but before we recorded, I would have said yes. I would have, I would have said the forces that be are going to make sure it's out before WordCamp US. But I want to take your optimistic approach. I think that <laughs> I think that that the people who are working on the project will make sure that we see a proper development cycle and a longer release candidate period. So I'm going to say it will not be out. Yeah, I'd probably second that for similar reasons. Cool. Well, You've convinced me. Yeah. Tune in next time. Let's see who's right. <laughs> yeah, e we'll either be doing a WordPress 5.0 is out show or a pre WordCamp US show. So <laughs> either way, it'll be fun. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Zach, thanks for joining me. As always, it's good to see your face. Hey, thanks. Check out JavaScript for WP.com. Find more on courses and Z Gordon on Twitter. All right, and I am Jay Casabona on Twitter, and you can find all of my courses over at creatorcourses.com. Until next time, all of you Guten nerds, get ready for WordPress 5.0. Maybe I'll see you at WordCamp US. Later. Ciao, everyone.